this is Stacy with Stacy's Ritzy Deepy Crafts, and I'm here to do another whipping chat. What does whipping chat mean? For those that do not know, it means that I work on something. So my work in progress or process, and I chat with you all. So I thought I'd do a little something different today, and instead of just talking about stuff, I was going to do a question and answer type of thing. So you guys get to know me just a little bit more. I'm not sure how many questions we'll get through, but we can always continue it on another chat if we don't finish. But first of all, how are y'all doing? Welcome if this is your first time here. Um, if it is your first time here, then please hit that subscribe button. I think it's in the bottom left hand my hand side. Uh, when you hit that subscribe button, you can hit the bell that goes ding ding. You'll be notified of all of my videos that I do upload. Um, welcome, welcome. And for those that have already been joining, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. Anytime you'd like to send a comment or comment on the video, please feel free to do that below because I love to read the comments and like to see what you have to say. So shall we begin? I am working on Aura Loa's Tea Time. Yeah, I'm doing, I think it's the bottom right side of the panel, bottom to middle right side of the panel. And I'm trying to get all of the color blocking done as much as I can um, before I get into the details or the color of it. So I cannot wait to get these sections finished because then up here is where all the color happens. So, excuse me, I do apologize. I'm kind of getting over a cold. No, nothing serious. Thank gosh. I just left my, my second pane of my window open when it was 40 degrees outside or 20 degrees and got a draft and got a cold. So nothing to it. I just might have to pause to cough so I don't cough in your ear. But shall we begin? I am using Bella Arte de Cultures. Voila, voila. And my... Bella's diamond painting pens. So this happens to just be a green one I'm using and I'll probably use another one as well. I just don't know which one I'll be using, but all's well. So anywho, um, let's see, before I go into questions, just kind of give you a background about me. I started, uh, or for those that haven't seen the prior videos, I started diamond painting in late June with some Amazon paintings and didn't really like them and switched over to my first Diamond Art Club one, which I got, I believe I got it at Hobby Lobby and it was Dreamcatcher. Fell in love with it and started purchasing the more known company canvases uh, because I didn't like the Amazon ones, all the glue was coming off of them or the gels weren't sticking or they weren't so shiny. So I wanted to, said, I oh, something I'm going to like. So let me go ahead and start trying one of the bigger canvases that y'all were talking about. So I started watching, um, found Lindsay um, Emerald and Fairy Lights and Katie of Diamonds and Washi's channel. And they were doing a big um, event. It was the first time I was joining. Um, they did the Emeralds and Fairy Lights did um, the just, uh, festival, DP, sorry, um, hash, I think it was hashtag DP Festival of Witches, and then Diamonds and Washi was doing the Drills and Chills 2021, and I absolutely loved those. Uh, my first painting was Late Miss Havisham from Diamond Art Club, and then I did Craft of Lee's Midnight Warrior for Drills and Chills. I'm sorry, for Festival of Witches, I did um, Midnight Warrior. And then I did the Breast Cancer Awareness one with Angie. And um, I hadn't really gotten into that part of it yet or didn't prepare for it because I wasn't aware of it. So I just got a little um, painting off of Amazon, which I really actually like doing. It came out really nice. It's a little bit small, um, but when I backed away from it, it was really nice. And I had that posted up. Um, so yeah, then I just kind of joined in the community as people were doing events. I would just 
um, check out any of the sponsors that they were doing or that were involved with the event. And then I would go tag the sponsors, YouTube videos or stores, and I would start watching their lives. And I just kind of met everybody in the diamond community. So there's a lot of people I know uh, and that I've been following since September for sure. Um, and it's been fun getting to know everybody. I've been on Shay's Live um, and I've um, spoken with a few others. I was on Rose Prophet's Live and Jenny's from Uniquely Yours. So I was able to join them one day. And it's just been really, really fun. And I love supporting the creators either by, you know, definitely purchasing stuff from them but and using it and sharing their uh, their creations on YouTube when I do my chats and whatnot. So it's been a lot of fun getting to know everybody and participating and slowly but surely becoming a creator myself. Um, I'm kind of using this as a I don't want to say a therapy, but as a mode to get me out, uh, I don't really talk to a lot of people and clam up when I do. So I'm kind of trying to break out of my shell and start talking to people again. I work from home. I stay at home and I don't really do anything. Um, once our Michaels closed, I used to go to Michaels and do arts and crafts all the time over there. And that was my going out and interacting with people because there's really nothing to do here. Um, I have my karate and that's my other family is my karate family because I go there Tuesdays and Thursdays with my daughter. Um, that's about it. Hold on one second. So I'm starting to open up and talk about stuff on here and get to know everyone on here. So thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for continuing to stick with me. Uh, really helps if you guys comment and subscribe so that way um, I can start doing more stuff and let's make this one big happy party, right? Mm -hmm. So, all right. So that's a little bit about me. Um, some of my hobbies I started out with is stained glass. When I was in high school, I did stained glass and shop class. I hated home ec, never wanted to do home ec. Uh, but we were forced to. I always like working with my hands, uh, which is why I love diamond painting, because it keeps me busy and out of trouble, and I don't have time to... Uh, anyway, um, so it keeps me busy. I can watch TV and stuff and have something to do. I do crochet, um, but I kind of put that down because I started diamond painting. Go figure. I still have a hat and scarf I've been trying to make. And I only get like a row or two done um, every couple days just because I'm not really doing it. So, yeah, I've got a friend I'm trying to make a scarf and hat for and told her, don't expect it anytime soon. But, yeah, so. Anywho. Um, but, yeah, so I started off doing stained glass once I got out of school. I loved it. I've uh, tried to crochet my, um, who I call Bubby, um, is our Jewish grandma. Um, she started to teach me how to crochet. And all I could do was chains, uh, start doing the foundation change, and maybe a single crochet. And then I just never really took up on it um, and kind of forgot about it over the years. And maybe about six years ago, I started picking it up again five, six years ago, and I was really involved with that, so I was doing a lot of crocheting, because uh, I didn't really have any hobbies at the time, I was always gaming, um, I used to play Call of Duty, and I used to game all the time, and I stopped doing that, thank God, um, and so I started crocheting, and then I started getting into um, painting, and I don't know if anybody paints, but actual paints with paint brushes and stuff, not diamond paint. Um, but I started watching Cinnamon Cooney, who is known as the Art Sherpa. So if any of you paint and you haven't checked her out, she's a lot of fun. And she has got some great tutorials uh, that are free. And 
she does watercoloring as well as painting. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and link her stuff below if I remember. Even though it's outside of diamond painting, you guys still might paint. Who knows? Or I might give you something else to watch. Or you might know somebody who paints and is interested in it. So I'll just link her below. Um, but yeah, so I started painting. I'm not really good at it. I can't freeform paint. Um, so I, she'd have traceables. And it's always okay to trace stuff out. Um, and then because what you're doing is actually painting. You're not an artist. You're not, you're not a, I was going to say a drawer. But um, you're a painter. You're not, yeah, someone who draws. So you can't be expected to draw stuff, to paint. Uh, so she would have her creations. Uh, so you could print them out and then trace them onto your canvas. So that way you can learn to paint. So some people think it's cheating, but it really isn't. Uh, so, yeah. So I did that, and then I stopped that for a while because I just wasn't of interest. Um, and I don't know, I think I just went back to trying crocheting again, and then I found diamond painting. And I was like, oh my God, I could do this at work. Um, in between calls, not to be bored. I don't have to worry about cleaning paintbrushes or spilling water everywhere on my desk. And lo and behold, the diamond painting addict of me was created yeah so now I'm a diamond painting addict I don't quite have as big of a stash as some of you other people do but I do have a pretty big stash and I know I know I still got to do a video of my stash and the projects that I'm working on so don't come at me I've been slowly trying to do it I actually had three unboxings done um, and I have to redo them and I'm so upset because one of them was mirrored and I have no idea how my camera started mirroring it. Another, um, I started and I couldn't get the setting right on how I wanted it filmed. So I kept refilming after I did the initial unboxing, I kept refilming stuff and it just, it wasn't looking right and I wasn't in the right frame of mind. So I'm like, I'll just finish recording it later. Um, but you get my initial reaction out of it. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then another one I had opened and I went to go do the unboxing of it. I think that was today or when I did this chat and I realized that some of the glue on it was looking weird. Like if I peeled back the cover, I could see where the glue was poured and I could see like um, the layering of the glue. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be an issue. And I'm going to do that unboxing. You'll see it probably in the next day or so. But I wanted to check with the company first and make sure that it wasn't something that would be too concerned about. And they're like, no, as long as the, it's still sticky, um, you shouldn't see it below the diamonds or the drills. I was like, okay, because I'm doing an unboxing and I just want to make sure it was addressed with the viewers. And so they're like, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. And I was like, okay. Um, I don't get any of my paintings for free. I don't get any like pre-order unboxings to do. Um, these are everything I've paid for, which I'm, I'm, you know, it's worth it to me, but Hey, I'm putting this out there. If you want me to do an unboxing, let me know. <laughs> but um, no, I, I don't, um, expect that. So, um, I like to do, I like to do the paintings I get, I unbox cause it makes me happy and I like to show things to you guys. And a lot of the stuff that I've gotten are probably older paintings. Um, and one of them I unbox some people totally forgot about it and then it piqued their interest to go buy it. So I was like, Oh, okay. So I don't mind doing unboxings of stuff that have been unboxed like months prior because they get forgotten sometimes. So, hey, just call me your friendly older painter reminder. <laughs> so, anywho, I just thought that was kind of silly. But I am sorry for my voice. I am getting over a cold, like I said earlier. Um, I don't believe it's COVID because 
I didn't have any of the major symptoms of it. I could still taste all my food. I think it's, I get this every year because I'm stupid and I go outside in 30 degree weather barefoot. And then I sit in front of a double pane window, forgetting to close the pane and have a chill all day long while I'm working. Not realizing, close the pane, silly goose. So I suffer. And as I walk back inside, while I run to my car barefoot in 30 degree weather, I think to myself, uh, I'm just going to get myself sick. And sure enough, two days later, I'm sick. So yeah, I do it to myself. Don't ask me why. I hate wearing shoes. Um, yeah, I've always walked around barefoot, so. Yeah. Anyway. So, let's see what else, what else. Daughter went back to school. So I'm happy about that. I get the house to myself. Yay. Uh, got her on an evening medication for her ADHD um, to try and give her that little extra six hour push. She takes her medicine early in the morning and it's an early release medicine. So it's supposed to last all day, but it, I've been noticing that it wears off about, ooh, I would say about four o'clock when she comes home because then she's just a little pain in my tuchus. Love her to death. Bright young lady, very creative, love her to death, but boy, does she get on my nerves sometimes. So spoke with her doctor about it let him know that you know we're really pushing it her focus her paying attention her you know everything that's going on especially in karate and she's like well let's try an evening medication it only lasts about six hours so you know it'll last her until bedtime and um, see how that goes for her so we have noticed that it has been helping out um uh, Little by little, so my mommy can relax. <laughs> so that's good news. And then um, I got, I was working on a project for um, rest, relax, and enjoy the view and to get to ride. And I'm so happy I got that project done. But it's still got about four more weeks to go. So I figured as long as we're posting, I can continue posting with my progress because I actually took progress pictures with it. So, and I, I love that. The um, um, Ticket to Ride is so much fun. Oh my gosh. I've never thought I would be making stuff up as I go with our posts and stuff. And, but like we're pretending that we're actually in those destinations and doing stuff. So like anytime I post something, it's like I've gone out and done an excursion. So it's pretty cool. Like snorkeling or riding ATVs or going horseback riding. So it makes it a lot of fun. Like I'm really happy. And Cheryl and um, Cheryl Katz on Facebook and um, Crafting Journey on YouTube. They are both... Um, doing it and what I'm working on right now which I will hashtag for the event is Alice in a Winter Wonderland and that's being done by Life with Lindsay and we both kind of started late on our projects because we were working on other projects but it's fun I love doing the events so this is the first year I can do it with everyone like last year I started in September so I didn't really have all these fun events to do so I'm so happy and there's so many events coming up in February that I'm doing as well and throughout the year so I'm excited I'm excited and you see my pen it's kind of got greens and blues in it mm -hmm. yeah I have this pen and this pen which is, I hope you can see it, let me see. This is from Bella as well. I call this my earth pen because it reminds me of earth, doesn't it? Isn't that cool? I love it. Okay, anyway, I might use that pen later, I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, so 
All right, so let's see. What can we ask ourselves today? Um, all right, so do you want guys want to go to the questions? Sorry for the noise. We can go to the questions. I think I'm only like 20 minutes in, so it'll give me something to talk about because I kind of don't really have anything going on today at all. Uh, all right, so let's try. And I know um, there were questions going out around Christmas time, and I didn't really do them then, so I may catch up on those at another time. But I really haven't been diamond painting long enough to answer some of those. So I'd really like like a year to go by and try again next Christmas. Uh, I still have to do a stash video, uh, more projects I completed. I'm just, oh, yeah, I'm behind. Uh, so I got to do that and then what my paintings are for future projects. So I just have other projects that keep popping up that I keep purchasing things for. Oh, it's just a hot mess in the gravy train, right? All right, so let's take a look here. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What is my favorite book to read? Let's try that. I... Used to read a lot of Stevie King and Dean Koontz books. And then I fell in love when I went into England. Uh, I went to England in the year 2000. And I literally um, uh, left two days before the attacks on the Twin Towers. Two days before. And I had to fly back into it. Uh, when I came back. So it was really interesting. I was in the Edinburgh Tower in England when they let us know. And I was traveling with people all over Europe. Uh, so it was very interesting how things were being handled. But for the most part, everyone was extremely supportive. I took copies of the newspapers from there so I made sure I bought a newspaper and I carry that all the way around Europe with me or it was basically um, England so I was in England and then we went to Ireland so I had papers from everywhere and I still have them I think they're up in my closet um, But anyway, so on, I was diverging and I do apologize. So off of that trip, I started to enjoy like his, the stories in London. We, um, in London and, oh, what was that town called? There was a town that starts with a B and the buildings, um, are shaped inward. Let me see. No, the buildings are shaped like this. So you have, like, they're, they're shaped, how can I say this? They're shaped going f this way. So the windows would be over here. And the reason why they were shaped this way for the outside wall is so when they poured water and other excrements out, they would pour it and it wouldn't hit the building below. That's what we were told. I don't know the that's true or not, but York, it was in York. That's what it was. So yeah, so we were told that the buildings go in this way. So that way when you threw water or soap, you know, soapy water, whatever, out the window, it wouldn't hit the, the windows below it or alongside the building. Yeah, I found that an interesting story. And then they told us um, they would take us around and tell us, you know, stories, ghost stories about people, Jack the Ripper and how there was an orphanage there that, um, I guess the kids were locked away or something happened to the orphanage and the kids ended up dying and, um, uh, or it was because of the plague. I think the kids ended up dying and we heard stories about the plague and all these ghosts, uh, 
that would come out and there was a girl that was forced to stay in her room up in a building and there was a gated window that she couldn't get out of but they say to this day uh, she ended up dying in there and to this day you can see her um, her body you know coming or her ghost come into the window it was just it was just so cool all these stories that we were hearing um it was kind of spooky because we were doing this at night um so you know you kind of thought you saw the images or you still kind of think about it sometimes just because it's in your head um but that got me on to historical fiction because I wanted to, I loved hearing about the plague and the olden times in England. And so I started reading uh, T, The Tea Rose and I fell in love with that book and it was the first book, it switched me from Stephen King and Dean Koontz. And it was the first book that I've ever sat there and yelled at the character. If you haven't read it and you want a good book to read, that's the one. Um, it's called The Tea Rose. I want to say it was by Jennifer Donnelly, I think. Uh, but yeah, it was a really good book. And then she went on and made um, The Winter Rose. And then... There's one after that I haven't heard of. And I think I read The Winter Rose, uh, but I haven't read the third book. So I'm thinking of going back and reading that one or purchasing it to read. I'm just trying to see if I have any more fives around. Um, so yeah, so that's my favorite book. And let's see. What does my child want to be when he or she grows up? Well, she is only nine, and ever since she must have went, started going to school uh, from kindergarten, she's wanted to be a teacher. Now, I had teachers are all over my family. My aunt's a teacher. Her two sons are teachers, or her son and daughter are teachers. Uh, my aunt is, my both my aunts are teachers. One is a dance teacher, and one was a school teacher. I've had... So I have three aunts, one, two, three aunts that are teachers, one, two cousins, I think, that are teachers, my sister's a teacher, um, there's a few teachers in our family, so my daughter wants to be one now, and hasn't changed her mind on that, so I really think she's going to be a teacher, and I think that's awesome, because teachers are what built the foundation for children. Um, and the parents should be doing that as well um, to help support the teachers. So yeah, so that's what she wants to be. Um, would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, or drive a car? Um, drive a car because it takes quicker, it's quicker. I love horses, though, but I think if I rode on a horse for too long, my butt would hurt after a while. Um, but I would love to ride horses. I actually went on a horse in, where was I? In Australia. And we took the horses down to the water on the beach. And, oh, my God, they just took off. That was a scare. I've cantered on a horse before when I was younger, but not when I was, like, 25. And it was a little scary because you're in a uh, unknown territory, you know. These horses just are taken off when they get to the beach. But it was so fun because the horses actually went into the, the water. And they would just swim in the water. And it was refreshing and it was really cool. So that was really fun. Um, let's see. And ride a bike? No. I can't ride a bike. Unless they're special bikes. I need a big butt seat. Because, come on, be honest. Those little bicycle seats go right up your tush, man. Like, it creates, it's sore after a while. I don't know how people ride on bikes like that with that stuff going up their butt. But I guess when you have a big butt, you need a big butt seat, right? With a lot of cushion for the pushing. 
but um yeah and then I need the handlebars up high so I need the handlebars to be upright so they're not like this they're like this because this girl's hands hurt the wrists hurt um, I can't put a lot of weight on them and when you have the bike the handlebars lower you're putting a lot of weight on your wrists so that's a no-go for me but I do like to ride I want to get back into shape and riding and I was thinking of getting an elliptical bike for exercise but those things are way too big I still haven't gotten my treadmill I haven't even looked since I was talking about it last so I'm gonna have to start looking into that but yeah so that's that um what two radio stations did I listen to in the car the most well I'm from Southern California Earthquake Central is what we always call it because I live near Northridge, which is where the big Northridge quakes hit. And we always listen to KROQ, which was called K Rock, and Kiss FM, um, Rick. Uh, what was the guy? I forget. There was a huge, very popular DJ on Kiss FM that went. Uh, is super popular and I forget his name but yeah we were Kiss FM and K-Rock people. K-Rock played like the alternative rock alternative rock of the 80s uh, so we watched that and Kiss FM was like the pop and uh, those were the stations we listened to and I like all types of music though I like uh, 50s music I will not oh god I do not like jazz I do not like jazz music. My dad played jazz all the time, and there were only certain songs I could handle, and I couldn't handle them for a long time. He loved Louis Armstrong, and so I could handle him a little bit. Um, and he loved a few others, but yeah, I, I can't stand jazz up my long. It's just too much for me. And then he always listened to like the sports on the radio or whenever we drove. I'm like, oh my gosh, seriously. And we did not have, we did not have headphones in those days. I think we, we had Walkman, but the headsets were so bad that you could still hear stuff going on outside of your headphones and it didn't block out the noise. And it was just awful. It was like, dad, change it. Cause none of us were sports fans. But nope, he did that in jazz. And my mom loved Barbara Streisand. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we listened to in the car when my parents drove anywhere. But, yeah, it's, I'm total alternative rock of the 80s. I loved 80s rock, 80s and 90s rock. Um, which would you rather do? Wash dishes, mow the lawn, clean the bathroom, or vacuum the house? Well, I really don't mind mowing the lawn as long as it's not too hot and there's no mosquitoes outside. Um, I'm in eastern North Carolina, and it gets humid as... Yeah, it gets really humid out here. And it is not fun to mow the yard in the middle of summer with the humidity and it being 90-something degrees outside. So I told myself last year, or this past summer, was the last time I was going to do that. Like, it would go about two or three weeks before I mowed. And with it raining, like, almost every other day after 3 o'clock, your grass grows quickly. So needless to say, my grass got up to my uh, calves before I cut it. And I didn't care. I was not going outside with those mosquitoes if I didn't have to. So this year, I think, because I kind of want to keep it more tidy... I think I'm just going to have a gardener come and do it. Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, my husband hates when I don't do the work myself, but you know what? Too bad. So I need the time. I need to stay sane. I need to stay sane. So I don't mind um, mowing. I've got a little, I've got a really nice mower that's a push mower. Um that it automatically goes like I can push it with one hand and it'll mow so I get it done pretty quickly and it's good exercise uh, clean the bathroom eh. 
it's okay because bathrooms are small so it shouldn't be too hard to clean and as long as you don't have to sanitize it shouldn't be too hard to clean up right yeah so I could do that do the dishes eh I don't like doing the dishes I especially do not like doing forks or the cutlery the forks knives and spoons I hate having to wash those I don't know why and it seems so simple but it's not so and I haven't had a dishwasher I just recently got a dishwasher I hadn't had a dishwasher for like eight years and uh, I just started getting tired of standing by the dishes having to do them every night and not and take, having that take up my time when I could be doing other fun stuff. And then, what is the other one? Vacuum the house I can handle. As long as the house, the floor is clean, I can vacuum that. It's not an issue. It's just my vacuum is not the greatest anymore. And um, the canister that's supposed to work doesn't stay on the vacuum. So I have to kind of lean the vacuum back when I do the floor and then stick the canister on. So I think I'm due for a new vacuum and I've got to find one that can pick up bigger pieces of trash than the one than the Dyson. The Dyson vacuums, they don't have that big of an opening for trash to get picked up. So it always kept clogging and I hated that. You know, if like a little plastic candy wrapper got stuck and I'm talking about like the mint candy wrappers, those little plastic ones that go on mints, it wouldn't even suck that up. It would get stuck. And then I'd be vacuuming and not realize it. Um, and, um, yeah, everything would get stuck on the bottom of the vacuum instead. And I'm just like, I'm so over this. So I'll probably be, end up getting a vacuum soon. Not sure when. Need it. We'll see. <laughs> uh, let's see what else, what else. If I could only eat one meal for the rest of my life, what would it be? And that would be sushi. One meal, sushi, um, sushi, sushi. I love sushi. Uh, either that or a really nice piece of steak that's not too peppery seasoning, that has just the right amount of seasoning, not a lot of salt. I hate salt. I can really taste salt. Um, but yeah, sushi is number one. And then steak. Uh, and then like vegetables. I love vegetables and salad. I used to love my salads. Now it's just like, eh. I used to make the biggest salads. Okay. Um, let's see. What else can we talk about? My nickname. What used to be my nickname? Um, well, as long as you guys don't use it against me and don't tease me about it, my dad, and I hated it, um, used to call me Spacey Stacy. Because I never remember anything. And I still don't. I have such a bad memory. Um, which is why I don't do politics or talk about history or anything like that. Because I can't remember crap. Um, and it's pretty embarrassing sometimes. Because I'll try and say something that I know. Um, and lo and behold, I'm not even right. <laughs> and then you just kind of sound ridiculous. But. If you want to talk to me about my job or health insurance or anything like that, I'm your girl. Like, I've got that in the bag. But, yeah, so I used to be called Spacey Stacy. Then, now I'm just called Stace. Um, my PE teachers used to call me the Flex um, for flexing muscles, F-L-E-X, because that was my last name was Flexer. And, yeah, I hated that. Come on, flex. Let's go. Flex those muscles. Yeah. Now my last name is Deal. So now I get, oh, great. That's a deal. Yeah, no. No, no, no. So now, and then everybody wanted to put an E in my name. They always spelled it S-T-A-C-E-Y. And, oh, ask anybody whose name is Stacy that's spelled S-T-A-C-Y or S-T-A-C-I. Uh, which I hardly ever see. But anybody that spells their name S-T-A-C-Y hates when there's an E in their name. I can almost guarantee you ask anybody that spells it that way. So 
I stood one day in high school. I was like, okay, I'm going to mess with everybody. Let me see how I can spell my name with an E in it. So then I went up to the chalkboard. And this was in the middle of shop class. And it was just hysterical. I don't know why it was so funny. But everyone got a kick out of it. Um, I went up to shop class. And I started spelling my name different ways. And the shop teacher, I think his name was Mr. Blemker, was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm getting creative. Just watch. So I spelled my name S-T-A-Y dash C. So stay C. I spelled it S-T-A-Y-S-E-A. -E I spelled it, um, how did I, I spelled it S-T-A-Y dash C with the long, um, like the long vowel sound over the C. So stay C. Like the letter C? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Don't ask. But yeah, I was I was getting off. So I think we stuck with S-T. Uh, and then I spelled it S. Oh, no, that's what I did. I did S-T-A-C-E with a line over it. S-T-A-Y dash C. Um, and then S-T-A-Y-S-E-A. -E and those were how I spelled Stacy. Everyone got a kick out of it. So at work, because there's two other Stacys. Which I'm not happy about, but again, what can you do? Uh, I like to be the original Stacy, but I now spell S T A C E because A is shorter. B, they can put the E in it, and I won't worry about it that way. And C, because you can type all of those letters on your left hand. So it's easy. Yep. <laughs> Go figure. I try and make it efficient. But yeah, so Stace, that's my nickname. Um, let's see, what is the first car that I drove? Ooh, uh, first car I drove was a 71 Ford LTD Ford. Yep, love that car. We called it the boat. And that thing was, it was loosey-goosey with the steering like, you barely moved it, and that car would just go to the direction that you would turn it in right away. It had a very loose steering. And the handle, the wheel, like, the steering wheel was super thin. But that car was a beast, man. I love that car. I would sit outside polishing that car almost every other weekend. Or every weekend. Those were the days. Yep. And then, um, so yeah, that was my boat. That was my first car. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see. What are my hobbies? We've already kind of talked about that. Uh, reading, crochet, kind of painting, diamond painting, of course, uh, and watching movies. Those are the things. Uh, what's the tallest building I've been on top of or in? I would say is the Empire State Building in New York. I had a chance to climb the Sydney Bridge when I was in Australia, and yeah, no, that was a hard no for me. I was too scared, so I didn't do that, but that would have been a good opportunity. But yeah, I was too scared to go up the Sydney Bridge. Too scared I was. All right, let's see. Do you love or hate roller coasters? Well... I didn't mind roller coasters like Disneyland roller coasters. <laughs> I couldn't handle, like, not, okay, the old style roller coasters, not the ones that go straight up and down. So I know they got, like, the Tower of Terror or something. Uh, I hate those. The fall, the ones that make you feel like you're falling. I don't think uh, Disneyland or uh, Magic Kingdom have... Uh, Ones that flip around. I know California Adventures has one roller coaster that has a, 
a flip to it. But yeah, I can't, I used to love those, you know, the Disneyland rides. We went on Space Mountain, Magic Horn, um, the Matterhorn, uh, Space Mountain. Uh, what else was there? Big Thunder Mountain or Thunder Bluff, I think they call it at Disney World, but Big Thunder Mountain, uh, Pirates, and Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is the worst that I can do. Um, and I can't do that anymore, but that's about all I can handle with the drop. I can't really handle the drops at all. Um, and I freak out and have panic attacks every time I go on it. But the last time I was at Disneyland that I didn't mind the rides was the year before I got pregnant. And I didn't even realize I was pregnant, so I'm kind of lucky I didn't go on those rides. But I was just, like, really not feeling it. And I just turned 50. Oh, uh, no, I was 49, I think. Yeah, I think I was, no, I was 50. Yeah, because I said I had to get pregnant by the time I was 50. So I got pregnant when I was 50. And it was over Thanksgiving. And then Christmas, we went to Disneyland. So... I was just not feeling it at all. I was so tired and I wasn't interested in the rides. Like I was, yeah, it was really weird. So I think that was the last time I really enjoyed it. And then I went a year and a half later, or almost two years later with my daughter when she was a year and a half. She was really young and I just wasn't feeling the rides then either. Oh, it was just really weird. And then after that, after I had Jackie, I was just like, I wasn't feeling the Disneyland rides. So now I kind of don't go on them. <laughs> a lot of them. But um, at Magic Mountain or Six Flags Magic Mountain, the ones I did was Ninja. Um, and I had to look at, I always had to look at the track above because on Ninja, you're swinging from the track and the tracks up here. So I always had to look up to see what the track was going to do because I felt that as long as I was, I sat in the very front and I could follow the track, then I could predict which way we were turning and stuff. It kind of lead into it and not get us sick. That was my theory. I'm just learning to breathe through the drops. Yeah, that was my theory. I, it kind of worked, but not too well. And I think I'm going to change out my colors, but I did, I did the corkscrew, I, I did the corkscrew, I did Ninja, I never went on Montezuma's Revenge because that one went backwards, and then there was the, uh, the Colossus, Oh, I don't know what got me on the Colossus, that's the old white one that they have, hold on, where's my peas? Where's my peas? Pretty please for my peas. But yeah, I they make me sick. I can't do roller coasters. I cannot do roller coasters at all. Hold on, I gotta find my peas. And my kid is a mess. I'm gonna put you on a brief pause. Okay, thank you for waiting. I found my peas. Oh, look, we got a few people here that don't belong. Oats, oats. Oats, oats. Alright. Yeah. So that's the story. Um, what was my favorite subject in school? I loved math. I was not a math genius, but I loved math. Especially when we got to algebra. Oh my gosh, don't even get me into geometry. I hated geometry. But loved algebra algebra was fun and i had mr kessler and mr kessler oh my gosh okay never mind we won't go there but yeah everyone liked mr kessler we'll leave it at that he was a good math teacher uh what's my favorite movie Ooh, what movies did i always watch over and over again i used to watch robin hood with um kevin costner used to watch that all the time and then hmm. oh god what was the other one 
Robin Hood. Well, there was a few others, but I know Robin Hood was one of them. And I used to watch it to keep my mind off of stuff. I don't know. God, what was the other ones I used to watch? I can't remember now. Uh, Wizard of Oz is my all-time favorite. Oh, Jet Li the One. I loved that movie with Jet Li. Uh, Jason Stratham was in it and uh, one other guy. I can't remember the other character, but yeah, Jason Stratham was really good and I love Jet Li. It was a really good movie. Um, so I watched that. I loved all the Jason Statham movies. Crank. Oh my gosh. If you guys have not seen Crank. Whew. That was funny. So basically. Um, he has to charge himself. With adrenaline. Um, he gets caught in something. I don't know the whole details. But I just remember that. He needed adrenaline to live. So he would do all this crazy stuff. To increase his adrenaline. So he could live. And it was just, he was just hysterical in that one. Oh, and what is it? The ex, the Expendables. Love the Expendables. It had all the cool actors in it. Or the, the um, action actors. And I always said there needs to be a movie with Jason Statham, Jet Li, um, and um, Rocky. What's his name? Sylvester Stallone and they all need to be in a movie together and sure enough like five or six years later The Expendables was born the whole entire franchise ugh my favorite movie let me kind of zoom in a little bit more sorry so they, those are my movies and I can watch them over and over again um let's see Am I distantly related or related to anyone famous? Nope. Not that I know of. But I did have a lot of famous people that went to my school. I went to Beverly Hills High School. Uh, yeah, I lived in the Valley. My mom taught there or was a substitute teacher there. So that was the only reason why we were able to go. No special privileges here. But I knew Corey Haim. Uh, you probably know him from the Lost Boys. But I knew him. And then Polly Shore went to my school. Oh, God, that guy was a riot. Um, the Menendez brothers. Yep, Steve Menendez went to my school. Brian Dottillo, I think he's on Days of Our Lives. Uh, Steve Burton from, I think, Days of Our Lives went to my school. Actually... Brian Dottillo and Steve Burton were both in my class. Uh, T.J. Johnson was on Little House of the Prairie when he was a kid. He went to my school. Oliver Robbins, he was in the Poltergeist, went to my, was in my class. All these people were in my class. Um, who else? Who else? Oh, huh, Monica Lewinsky. Yeah, she went to my school. And you know, when all that stuff went on, um, with Clinton, um, I went to my school yearbooks to see if her pictures were in there. Somehow they were not in there. Not one of her pictures were in my yearbook. And she was a journalist. I think she was a journalist in my school. For, you know, she worked on the, the yearbook. So I don't know how she kept out of the pictures, but yeah, she went in my class. She was in my class or she was, she went in my, she was at my school and in my yearbooks, her name was there and everything, but nope, no picture. So I think she had everything planned personally. I think everything was planned. But yeah, those are a couple of people. Uh, uh, Richard, Richard, not Richard Lewis. Uh, Richard Pryor's daughter, Rain Pryor. Oh, that girl has a voice. She went to my school. So yeah, there were quite a few people that went to my school. Uh, let's see, let's see. Have I ever had a surprise party? No, unfortunately I haven't. Um, although I did have a surprise baby shower when I was at work. Uh, but that was nothing special because I don't think anybody... 
I think it was forced to do it. Because somebody else had a baby shower. And uh, I wasn't too friends with too many people at work. Only because I was a high achiever. And everybody hated that. I was walking, I was passing them up. And I think it was just all jealousy, but whatever. So yeah, so I had a surprise baby shower. Nothing too special. Um, if I had a warning label, what would yours say? <laughs> uh, I have a shirt that actually has a sweatshirt that has a warning label. It says, if you don't like what I have to say, don't talk to me. Is that good enough? Does that say it all? Uh, no, warning label for me is I tell it like it is. Exactly. I don't have a filter and I tell it like it is. So if you're asking me if you, the outfit looks good on you, I ain't going to spice it up. I'll tell you like it is. You look like a fool. You're going out like that? Seriously? Yeah. That does not look good on you. Mm -mm. Uh, you know your makeup kind of isn't blended too well. Yeah, not that I would say any of that because I really don't dress right and I don't wear makeup. So, but you ask me my opinion, I'm going to tell you like it is. Do I like something that you did? No. Or yes, it's really nice. But did you like the flowers I bought you? Um, well, I guess don't really like flowers I'd rather get a bowl of fruit or a fruit basket than flowers yeah no I'm I'm appreciative when people do stuff don't get me wrong but instead of flowers I would rather have something I could use or that doesn't get thrown away if you know what I mean like food it doesn't get thrown away. It gets used. It goes right in my belly, right? So get me a flower, a fruit bouquet instead of flowers. Get me strawberries that have covered chocolate on them. Flowers die. And then you have to throw them away. But they are beautiful. My husband has surprised me a couple times. And it's just nice. It's nice to get that stuff. For sure. Um... What celebrity do I look like? I have no clue. But I will tell you this. When I went fishing when I was in my 20s and 30s, I used to go fishing a lot. And I was a lot better in shape. And I loved it. I had probably a six-year-old who was with his dad look at me when I was eating in the galley during our break. The galley is like the inside of the boat where you sit down and have your coffee or your food between going outside and going fishing, right? I had this kid come up to me and say, you know who you look like? And I'm like, who? He's like Xena, the warrior princess. I looked at him, I'm like, seriously? His dad looked at me. I didn't know these people. His dad looked at me and then he looked at his son. He's like, what are you doing watching Xena? <laughs> oh, it was hysterical. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm Xena the Warrior Princess. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I have no clue. I just thought it was funny. But I think we're coming up to my hour of talking to you guys. And I hope you got a little know-it-all about me. Uh, sorry again for my voice, but I'm glad it, that you stuck with it. If you got here through the end... Put a little car up because of my LTD Ford, 72, 71 LTD Ford vehicle. Go ahead and put a car up if you made it to the end. Uh, comment below uh, anything you like. If you have other questions you want to ask me, go for it. I am open. Ask away and I will put it in my next whip and chat. Um, I am trying to go live, but I think I have like a 30 day period. I have to wait once I get my subscribers. So I think I'm just waiting in limbo for that. So I will try and go live when I can. Um, I'm kind of nervous about it. So I might have somebody on with me. If you're interested, let me know. I'm 
Now I was on Shay's live and I absolutely loved it. Crafting with Shay. Um, and she made me feel so comfortable and I really appreciate it, but I don't know if I'd be able to hold up a conversation for the hour that I'm live. I know I could read the chat and laugh at the chat. Ha ha. Cause y'all are pretty funny, but I don't know if I could do it my own for that long. Uh, but I would love to do that. So yeah, comment away, watch all my videos at least till the end, please. Um, if you are interested in them, I try and make them quick or interesting for y'all. Um, definitely PM me if you have any suggestions and don't want to post it. Um, I am open for any constructive criticism. Um, and I really appreciate the feedback. But I am going to call it a night because I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I really appreciate you guys sticking around. Please, again, if you're new here or you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. It'll be in the bottom. Um, I'm really hoping it's like right there. Um, bottom right side of the screen. And then hit the bell. Um, that'll at least alert you to any new videos I post. And there will be a lot more content. I did kind of give a hint on something in this video. I am not going to tell you what it is. It will be reviewed in April. Don't technically need to keep track of anything. Um... But if you do keep track of it, don't post on my chats if you figure out what it is. If you already know what it is because you're a creator um, and you know the type of creator I'm talking to and who I spoke to already, do not say anything to nobody. Um, but if you think you know what it is, then you are welcome to PM me at any time. I'm putting my links below. Um, so my, my links will be below on how you can contact me. I would love to see if anyone figures it out. Um, there's three people, four people that know right now, and that's all I'm going to say, and they can't say it. So you guys are going to have to wait and play along, but it is going to be a lot of fun and I can't wait, um, to tell you all. So stick around, stick around. I promise it'll be fun. Um. But I'm going to call it a night. So I'm going to try and get some unboxings done. I'm going to try and redo an unboxing. So I do apologize ahead of time for the editing. Um, if it seems kind of two-part editing. But I'm sure you guys can handle it. Um, again, make sure you subscribe. Click that thumbs up if you enjoyed this, please. It doesn't take more than a second to do that. And I would really appreciate it if you did. If you didn't watch it all the way through, that's okay too. Still, please give me that thumbs up. Uh, comments below. I love to read them and know um, what you guys are all thinking or what comments you have to say. And I do respond to every single one of them. You guys all take it easy. This is Stacy with Stacy's Ritzy DP Crafts. Have a great evening, morning or afternoon, depending when you're watching this. Stay true to yourself. Be smart. Be wise. Be safe. Love yourself. Have a great day. Bye, y'all.